I just saw this. Look at this. This just comes across my feed. The Batman game that became Shadow of Mordor. Canceled Batman game set in Nolan's universe revealed. We're going to watch this. I haven't heard anything about this. If this turns out to be that they were working on like a Shadow of Mordor Arkham game in the Nolan universe and they canceled that and we got Suicide and uh, Suicide Squad instead, I I'm going to I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream. I'm going to I'm going to actually scream. Let's see it. I'm, uh, let me down gently. Hey, Damon here and in today's gaming news, a canceled Batman game has emerged from the shadows. You apparently played a lot of older games last year and Hellblade 2's developer explained why it's focused on shorter experiences. This is your Daily Fix. Holy intro, Batman. Gameplay and images for a canceled Nolanverse Batman game that was once in development at Monolith Productions have emerged online. Before it released the much loved It was in development at Monolith, the guys from the Nemesis system. Like uh. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor in 2014, Warner Brothers owned Studio Monolith worked on a game codenamed Project Apollo that was intended as a Nolanverse Batman effort based on the version of the Caped Crusader played by Christian Bale. Now, years later, Twitter user Spidey Ranger has unearthed images and gameplay footage that gives us an idea of what might have been. They show Monolith's intent to create an open world Batman game set in Gotham with stealth and combat mechanics that will look familiar to anyone who's played Rocksteady's Arkham games, but visuals more in line with Nolan's grounded vision of the Dark Knight. As Spidey Ranger points out, the game would have marked the debut of the Nemesis system mechanic, wherein enemies retain memories of encounters. This might have distinguished it from the Arkham franchise, which would have been two or three entries deep at that point. Now, if it's Sounds strange that Warner Brothers would have wanted two different Batman franchises competing with each other. Well, someone at WV eventually figured that out, and the project was transformed into a Lord of the Rings game, which is also kind of weird to think about. Some IGN users have pointed out that the Nemesis system actually makes a lot more sense in the context of Batman than in Lord of the Rings. Now, today, Monolith is supposedly working on that Wonder Woman game. It was announced in 2021, and it has not been mentioned by Monolith or Warner Brothers since. I... 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 I can't. I <laughs> rage, yeah. Um oh, man. I just we need we need to just walk it off. Walk it off. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's okay. It probably would have sucked, right? It probably wouldn't have even been that good. So what does it matter? Well, it doesn't matter because you know I, if they were just gonna like if they were just gonna screw it up it wouldn't have mattered because it would have been like stupid or whatever so so it's probably good that it was canceled it's okay it's okay it's okay everything is okay now this is my villain origin moment this is where it starts <laughs> this is this is uh this is where it begins it's okay Everything's okay. I I agree with them actually that in the context of the Batman universe, I, like I think it makes a whole hell of a lot more sense to have a nemesis system there than in the Lord of the Rings franchise. It worked obviously with Shadow of Mordor and everything, but um, I I do think there's the opportunity. I'm sorry, my my brain is just fried. I I think with all of this, it's. It would have made a lot more sense in this context, but I guess we'll never, we'll never see it. So this is what they showed earlier. A dedicated button for first person mode. That's weird. Could be traversed by either gliding or utilizing the grappling hook, like in the Arkham games, or by operating the Tumblr or Batmobile. Dude, it just makes you really realize how much work goes into these, like, prototypes that never see the light of day. It's kind of heartbreaking. Like... So much work went into this. And we're just now seeing it. Like, we've heard of it for ages because you guys are saying that the actors talked about it and they were working on it, but it's just crazy. Yeah, very 2010 UI. Yeah, very 2008 even. But, I mean, that's crazy. That is actually crazy. And the whole premise would be that you would fight against, like, regular goons and thugs that could work their way up at, at, like within the crime organizations if they defeat you a couple of times and 
So you could just get to the point where you have like this whole infrastructure of enemies and thugs and goons and whatever that if they beat up Batman, they level up and they become crime lords and run certain districts of Gotham and everything. And that makes so much sense for the nemesis system. I mean, that is perfect. Like, I, I'm still surprised that they haven't used the nemesis system in any other franchises because um, it just makes so much sense. But and, I mean, we're allegedly getting it with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is going to feature the nemesis system. I don't know in what context, if it's just going to be Shadow of Mordor, but with Wonder Woman. That to me sounds not as compelling, but you know, they've been working on this for what, seven years now. So they probably have something interesting to show, but I mean, look at that. Very, very different from even the Arkham games. So really, really interesting. Yeah. Do not distribute. This was filmed March 15th, 2010, 14 years ago. Ooh, baby. That's wild. Yeah, they did trademark it. Um, but my understanding is that Warner Brothers holds the trademark. So it's not even like monolith specifically. So they could have like share the tech with other teams and, and stuff, but they did trademark it. What I would love for them to do, which of course they would never do, would be to share and open the use of the patents. Like Tesla famously did a ton of research and a lot of pioneering with electric vehicles, and they patented a ton of the tech that's required for electric vehicles, but they opened use of all of their patents so that everybody could use it because their, at least what Elon said, was that their main goal was to accelerate the adoption of EVs in uh, the world. So they opened all of that up. So they could sue all of these other EV manufacturers for infringing on their patents, but they've opened it up to try to like share the technology, share the research. So we get better products overall. I would love for these guys to do something where they're like, yeah, the nemesis system, really novel idea, super, super cool. We're going to open it up. Anybody can make a nemesis system game because we just believe in making better games full stop. And we really believe that this is a cool thing to have in your video games. But let's be honest, they're never going to do that. <laughs> they're, they're never, ever, ever going to do that. Yeah. Which is a pretty dumb thing to, for Elon to do. Maybe I mean, it's not what a typical CEO would have done. I'll give you that. I, I think it was kind of a gamble on two sides. Like I think he does want to accelerate the adoption of EVs. But on the other hand, he also wants to... Um, get EVs to be much more normalized so that like charging stations become much more common all across the country and world. So there's a lot of stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, it's, there's no doubt that it probably was not the most traditional decision. Maybe they, maybe they put in Wonder Woman. Maybe that's why they can Batman. I mean, I just, with all this, it just, it, it seems like they were working on this back in like 2010, they reworked it into the Shadow of Mordor game, which blew up in one game of the year and was super successful, and then used it in Shadow of War, and now they're using it in Wonder Woman, and we'll see how that works out, because I just, I hear Wonder Woman, and I'm like, I, I just wish we would have gotten it with, with Batman, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe it works out awesome. I mean, again, they've been working for like seven years on this, so... Whatever it ends up being, they've spent a lot of time working on it. But all of this to say, I mean, it, it's it's crazy. Yeah, they apparently, Warner Brothers, didn't like the idea of two concurrent Batman franchises, which is what uh, would have been in this, wait, what would have been this Nolanverse game in the Arkham games? Yeah. So this Nolanverse game was retooled into a game set in the world of Lord of the Rings. It became Shadow of Mordor. Did you know gaming also says Nolan himself might have canceled the game as a result of wanting to focus on the trilogy's third film, The Dark Knight Rises, as noted by IGN. So it's possible that even he stepped in and tried to stop it. Let's see what else they say. Gotham Knights Maker, Warner Brothers Montreal had its Damian Wayne Batman game canceled before it was even announced. Work on that game followed the cancellation of Suicide Squad game in 2016. Batman Arkham developer Rocksteady released a Suicide Squad game of its own called Kill the Justice League earlier this year. As for Monolith, after scrapping the Nolan vs. Batman game and releasing a multiplayer shooter, um, Gotham City Imposters in 2012, it went on to release the aforementioned Shadow of War, then its follow-up 2017's Middle Earth Shadow of War uh, or Shadow of Mordor, and then Shadow of War, and is working on the untitled Wonder Woman game. I forgot they did Gotham Imposters. That's funny. 
Gotham Imposters, a 2012 game from Monolith. It's crazy that they went from this to Shadow of Mordor like a year later when Gotham City goes to war. So, I mean, it looks like Overwatch, but with <laughs> like Gotham themes, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. I mean, it's crazy. That's very, that's a very, very different game from what we got with Shadow of Mordor. Very, very different. It's wild. Okay. Well, who knew? Who knew? Didn't even realize. It's almost as though audiences want multiple Batman projects. Yeah. I'm like, I can see how in the years leading up to it, like, it, like, let's say you're in 2008 or something. Well, but that's not even the case because it was 2010. So Arkham Asylum launched in 2009, if I recall correctly. And then that was super, super successful. And then they have these demo videos and stuff they're capturing of this game in 2010. So they have Arkham Asylum, super successful. They're working on Arkham City, which is about to release a year later. And that's like also going to blow up and be super successful. But who knows for sure? It's not guaranteed at that point. And they look at that and they decide to cancel this monolith game because they don't want two competing Batman games at the same time. I just, maybe they were worried about conflicting like tones, you know, maybe they're like, oh yeah, the Arkham games are in a different universe than this game would be since this is in the Nolan verse. We don't want to step on each other's toes. So maybe we just won't do that. But also like Batman was at its peak. Batman was everywhere i mean the dark knight was massive and then arkham or batman uh the dark knight rising or rises whatever it was that that also blew up so it's just it seems like a weird choice of course we got uh shadow of mordor which was also amazing and awesome so we still got some great stuff but i'm very bummed we didn't get this because this would have been awesome dude it would have been badass Maybe one day we get it. Maybe that's how they return to the, the Batman franchise. Maybe maybe they choose to, okay, well, we're not going to let Rocksteady do it. Let's do something else. Who knows? Maybe. That'd be awesome. I don't think anyone would care. I mean, honestly, if they let Rocksteady go back and try, you know, if they could, um, if they still had the talent on the team for it. But if they went back and did like another Arkham game with a Nemesis system, I think people would be super stoked for that. I don't know how that works out because it's just, you know, again, they've burnt a lot of goodwill, but still. You played the Bad Max, Mad Max game? Yeah, I loved it. It's great. Batman's dead, Luke. No, he could still be alive because it could have been a clone. It could be something different. You don't, you don't know that. They could they could change their minds about it or something. Yeah. Well, honestly, Kevin Conroy being gone is is an actual like problem for them because they've got to they got to come up with something to shake it up. I mean, because you want to be respectful for it. You don't want to just replace him with anybody else. So I think the actual Arkham franchise is probably dead, but they could do a reboot or something or just have a different version of Batman playable. He took my thing. <laughs>